Alright, well, as much as I'd like to be uh, showing you guys a new video on Eagle Bruce here and the Eagle Bruce install on our 79 Coupe, um, unfortunately I got to spend this Sunday we're looking at our 86. Um, I think she's hurt pretty bad, so I'll tell you a little story here. So, <laughs> been driving this car all weekend. It's been a uh, beautiful weather. Took it out Friday night, went to our regular Albertsons car show, little hangout, and um, on the way home, I kind of got in on third pretty hard, like I always do, third and fourth, and noticed that it was building boost really quick, uh, quicker than normal, and I hit boost protection twice in the thing. It hit 13, I have it set at, at 12 and a half or 12.6 PSI uh, for boost protection. I need to verify that. It's, it's up there though. And um, I hit it twice really quickly uh, without <laughs> really hesitation. So thought that was really weird. I backed off of it. And then uh, next day I come out, fired up the car. We're gonna go take it out. And uh, didn't think twice about it. We drove it all the way up to, me and my son, drove it all the way up to uh, Alley Cats and Hearst. And we did some go-kart racing and did some fun stuff like that. And I get home, it's running good. Um, ended up breaking my uh, exhaust cutout, electric cutout valve broke. It's stuck. It's stuck open. So I got to pull that off and look at it too. But um, on the way home, I decided just to open the hood up, to let it let it vent. And uh, this is what I saw. Check this out. Then um, I started it back up later that day and noticed a lot of blow by uh, coming out of the out of the uh, the catch can here. So, anyways. Something's hurting in it. Uh, we've got way too much blow by, um, and I got a lot of things we need to check. We're gonna do some basic. This is kind of gonna be a rundown of how I'm gonna uh, diagnose the motor to see why we have blow by, see why I had so much water and condensation and sludge uh, coming out of the, the breather here. Um, so as you can see in that, that picture that there's a lot of just nastiness, um, it, it's excess, excessive. It was all over the engine bay. It was up here. So something had been forcing what looked like coolant. Now here's the deal. This is what I drained out of right here. So this is all liquid. And guess what? It looks green and it smells. I, it's hard to tell. Now they can say if it smells coolant, um, look at that. You can see that here. It looks like coolant. It doesn't look like water. Um, that milky sludge on top is just where the condensation, actual water is probably blended in with the oil. So this is what I uh, drained out of the, uh, the breather catch can here I have on the side. This is a lot of liquid. So I'm forcing liquid up into the intake or forcing so much blow by that is creating so much condensation. Now the good thing is, is that my catch can's working and the, the system's working as it should. It's just not good what we're seeing here. Let me kind of go over what we got here. All right, as you guys know, this is my on three turbo setup here. It's just a standard 306, trick flow head and upper end, um, speed pro forged pistons and stock bottom end. Um, running about 10 to 12 PSI. Again, I had it set to 10 and then on the way home, um, it hit 13. Now, why did that happen? Let's think about this. The boost controller is right here. There's a lot of people walking around the car show. I'm never with my car all the time. I leave the hood open. We walk around. We check out other people's rides. Uh, we go to the store, get stuff for dinner. Like I'm doing my thing, right? There's a really good possibility that someone just doesn't know about these cars. Um, put their hand in there and twist the knob. You know, oh, what is this? You know, it's it's, it's knobby. It's just turn a little bit. See what it does. So. It's very likely that they could have twisted or something else in the motor is just causing it to make more boost. I don't know. I don't know what happened. Um, and I have a pretty conservative tune on it. It's not a race tune. I don't race this car. Um, it's conservative, but it's not, you know, it's in between. It's not like completely safe, I guess. But anyways, so this breather setup system is very common for guys running turbo setups who want a simple um, design, simple setup, but not having to run a actual PVC system, to, you know, to convert your gases or direct your gases into the intake. Um, it's much easier just to vent to atmosphere. So that's what I'm doing here. So we have the uh, breather tank here. This is also a catch can, and you can see here I've got it removed already. But um, it it is a a actual catch can. Um, it should be catching on the all the oil and junk is going to go into here. 
which is doing its job, it's doing exactly how what it should be doing. So I've got basically a A and fitting on the uh, passenger side valve cover in the back there, and it's snaking underneath the intake, going to this top line, and this bottom line here is the same deal. It's got a 90 degree fitting, uh, bulkhead fitting right there, A and fitting, going to the driver's side. So that's how I'm setting up, that's how I'm breathing and venting this system. So it's very common setup, and uh, like I said, and it's done its job because as you can see, everything is being collected here and not being sucked anywhere else into the motor. All right, so after I saw all the vapors coming out of the breather there, I stopped driving the car, pulled it into the garage, posted it up on Instagram. Now here's the thing, my oil is clean. We're gonna look at this a second. We're gonna look at everything. We're gonna look at the oil. Uh, the coolant is clean. The coolant is not milky, it's not sludgy, and the oil is not milky, not, not sludgy. So we're not mixing you know, oil into the coolant passages. We're not mixing coolant into the oil passages, but we are getting moisture into the intake, which is pushing it up into the heads, um, into the valve cover, and then burning off as vapor, which is being caught into the catch can. And then of course, condensing back into a liquid, which is what we've, we've got here. Now again, I don't smell, it smells very rich. It smells like used motor oil, it smells very gassy, but I don't smell coolant. Coolant has a really sweet, you know, distinctive smell but it's green, so I don't know. So my thought is, and I posted up on Instagram. If you guys follow me on Instagram, um, you'll see these kind of things posted before I make the video, but I did post it up on Instagram and Facebook, how a lot of you viewers respond back, um, and the news is probably not so good. It sounds like, you know, maybe, possibly, we've got a, uh, a piston ring cracked, a land, ring, <laughs> ring land cracked, or a piston ring itself um, toasted. Um, anyways, we got a lot of good suggestions from the viewers, a lot of good suggestions. So Justin LX, he just said, man, just pull, pull the plugs. If you have a clean plug, there's your problem. So if we pull the plug out and it's clean, it shows that we're burning um, a lot of water into that, which is basically steam cleaning everything in that cylinder. So that'll give us a, a, an idea. I've also had, I don't have a leak down test, where we may have to go rent one. Um, we're gonna do, we do a leak down test in all the cylinders. Um, what I do have, I have a combustion gas, um, tool that checks for combustion gases within your coolant system. We've got that, I have one here. We're gonna run through that, we're gonna test that as well. That'll tell us if we're pushing combustion gases into the cooling system and therefore, you know, another indicator of a of a gasket, head gasket leak or something. So we can do that. Uh, and then also, you know, when it comes down to it, of course, we turn the motor down and actually take a look at the heads. So it's not good. It's not bad. It could be fine. It could just be excessive moisture, but listen, man, it's been, it has been hot and cold, you know, 30s and 40s in the mornings, um, 75, 80 at you know, daytime. It's excessively, pretty excessive swing. Um, but the humidity here is not that high right now. So I don't know. I've never seen it. Here's the deal. I've had this car with this setup now for four years and something has changed. Um, it's never done this before. It's definitely never puked um, milk, chocolate milk out of the breather cap. That's not good. And it definitely never, has never created this kind of blow by when I started it up. It's always had a little bit of blow by, but not like that, man. So. Something's up with it. All we gotta do is just one by one, check off the list until we find what's wrong with it. Let's do it. And another thing I wanna point out here, let's go ahead and take a look at the radiator. The radiator is leaking, okay? This is something that is new, that has started. You can see the white residue is running down here. Now this is an indicator to me um, that this is possibly being pressurized. Um, and it looks like it's weeping out of either the crack here, or not the crack, but you know what I mean, the this, this seam, the press seam where the filler cap is, um, or on, on this hose. Now I replaced this hose yesterday, and it's a nice tight fitting, um, but it just seems to be that it's run, either pushing out of here, going into there, you know, see the hose is wet. But you can also see the puddle of coolant um, down below it, and you can also see the residue running down the side of the radiator. So that's not good. And on top of that, the coolant was awfully low yesterday. So I topped it off. That's why you see coolant here. So I let the car cool down, open up the cap, and yeah, it was about, about yay low. And my catch can, or my um, overflow tank here was was low as well. So I filled it up halfway, and I filled this guy up too. So it is cold, let's take a look at it. I'll show you how clean it is. Let's see if we can see in there, it's low again. Yeah, see that's not good guys. We've got, I've got coolant. It's about right here, looks like. So clearly it's going somewhere. So at this point, you know, if you're filling up your cylinders with, with coolant, you would also see white smoke. I don't get white smoke out of the exhaust when I fire this thing up. I just don't. So I'm like, it, 
it's weird. Like there's not the the standard, you know, head gasket blown indicator that you would get. You know, you get white smoke, milky oil, all kinds of junk like that, right? Um, or just white smoke out of the exhaust because you're sucking in coolant into your uh, chambers and you're burning it. it creates white smoke. Not getting that, okay? And the coolant is is clean. All right, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do a engine block test kit. Okay, this is a kit I purchased because I was buying a lot of used vehicles, um, you know, for my stepdaughter and stuff like that with really high miles on it. So I would run this before we purchased it um, just to see if it had a head gasket leak or anything major. So this is really cool. So this is really, real simple. You fill this up to a uh, to the line here with some blue liquid. And it's kind of good right now that the, um, that the coolant level is low because you don't want any coolant touching this probe and going into this in, into here but basically all it does is you take the bulb here once the engine's hot idling you're going to shove this into the neck of your radiator and then use this pump what this does is this bulb is going to suck in air from the radiator and bring it into the liquid and now if the liquid changes from a blue to yellow that tells us we have combustion gases in uh, the liquid these are actually cheap they're pretty affordable you can find them on amazon uh, i believe that's where i got mine i don't really remember but um it's really simple it comes with this and it comes with a bottle of the uh, test fluid we do have to get the engine up to operating temperature and go ahead and get it nice and warm um so we could do this but i think this is this is key and we're also going to look for bubbles in the system but it's good that it's low because you don't want this rising up and when it you know when it heats up you don't want it going into our test tube here so let's do this starting to get a little bit of a, a little bit of blow by here this is normal there we go All right, if this turns yellow, that means we got combustion gases into the cooling system here. I don't know. So far, it doesn't really look yellow. Operator, two minutes. Okay, we didn't do it for two minutes. That's a long time. Yeah. All right, we'll keep going. I've never seen this stuff turn yellow. Like how yellow does it turn? Like coolant yellow? When we did the test. I mean, it doesn't look, it looks cloudy in there just from the, or leaking cylinder heading as of the test change will change from blue or blue green to a yellow color. I mean, that is blue green. Blue or blue green to yellow. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, the blow by is nothing like it was yesterday. But yeah, I took these, you know, I took both the A fittings off the breather and the bottom tube had the same yellow milky sludge which leads to um, the driver's side so i'm going to okay. start on the driver's side look at the plugs on it i think so and i think this i'll show you here don't forget about the youtube viewers jeez they want to see too okay i don't know if you can see in there look at that yeah. you can you can see that slide in fact yeah i'll show you on the let me show you this look on the fitting itself oh yeah you can see it in there. so you can see how this one has this milky sludgy wateriness and this one doesn't which to me tells me that it's definitely a problem with the bank Otherwise, both would be, if it was just condensation in the motor, be it would be both, both banks. Yeah. But this is sludgy. This lower hose was sludgy, and it looked like the crap that we pulled out, you know, yesterday. So I think we need to start on the, uh, start on this side, pull the plugs. All right, so we got cylinder five, six, seven, and eight here. Um, five, six looks about normal. You've got uh, you've got your nice tan color there. Ring gap looks pretty good. However, seven here looks a little washed out. So it's not clean per se. It's got a lot of carbon on it though. So it's different. And then of course eight here. Ooh, eight's hot. Um, eight looks like five and six. So we have a uniqueness here. So we got five, six, seven, and then eight. So I have another thing we're gonna try. Well, I got the plugs out. I have an endoscope. We're gonna put a camera in there and we're gonna take a look at all the cylinders. I'm gonna go ahead and start with cylinder number seven, see if we can see anything. 
<laughs> you would actually be surprised how affordable these are. This is a, uh, I don't know, a Depsteck DS300. And it does its job. The only thing I don't like about it is the, the, the cable one. It's like kind of creepy huge. But yeah, it does its job. I'll show you what it does here. It's actually got it's actually got two cameras on it. It's got one on the end in a light. And it's also got one on the side here. So we can kind of get a view of both of them here. We don't need this much cable, so. And uh, turn it on. All right, let's uh, let's just poke it in here. Let's see what happens. That is an awfully clean piston. The damn thing looks brand new. <laughs> yeah, 30 over, okay. I'm trying to twist it here. Oh man, let me see if I can get the bottom camera then. Let's see how do you get the bottom camera on here. No debris, no marks. All right, I'm gonna record this. Hopefully you guys can see it. I'll show this on the screen, what I'm looking at here too. It's kind of neat. Okay. So I've got the side view there. Let's check out this other one here now. Let's check out. So see, <laughs> this is um, cylinder number three. Oh, I'm sorry, six, um, seven. No, God, six. Cylinder number six. Now look at this footage here on cylinder number six. Look how, look at the carbon deposit on it. Now that's normal, right? I mean, you want to, no, you don't want to see it, but I mean, that's carbon deposits, right? So definitely seven here is the piston of our concern because of how clean it is. Yeah. Look at that. There's almost no carbon deposits on this thing at all. Man. But I'll tell you what, the ring lands look good. Um. All right, guys, I think we found our problem here. We've got coolant here and cylinder number uh, seven. And uh, let's see if I can flip through these somehow. Yep, we got coolant around the uh, ring land there, coolant sitting on the valve relief, and look how clean this piston is, okay? That's not normal. This thing should have carbon on it, but it doesn't. It is actually steamed perfectly clean. It looks like a brand new cylinder which means there's no doubt in my mind we are getting um, obviously coolant into the combustion chamber, therefore burning off the gas, kind of kind of confirm our suspicion here. So yeah, if I go back a little bit, yeah, there's another shot of it. Yep. Both valve reliefs are sitting with some coolant in it. Yep. And you can go back to another cylinder here. Let's see, Let's see if it's in this one. But basically you can definitely see the difference between that cylinder, because that's, that's uh, still number seven here. Let's see here, I think this is number eight. So this is the kind of carbon that you should see. Okay, so yeah, so see that, that that's that's more expected. And in fact, I think there's some leaking into the eight cylinder as well, because it still, still looks a little bit too clean, but um, yeah. <laughs> so, okay, we're able to, by process of elimination, kind of tell which bank had the issue. And because I had an, so much water residue coming out of the driver's side bank on five, six, seven, and eight, um, I started there, pull the plugs, Number seven plug here was way too clean, okay? You don't have your normal carbon deposits like you would see here on your um, five, six, and eight. So seven was completely different. Started there, put the endoscope in there, and noticed that the piston is shiny clean and it's also got a pool of coolant sitting on the valve reliefs. So we have a head gasket leak. Hopefully it's not a, a cracked block. I don't think it's that bad. Um, we will know. We'll have to turn to the motor, so we're gonna have to stay tuned for that. So that's next. Um, just working Eagle Bruce today because I'm not tearing into this motor today, but that's going to have to happen. Um, obviously, being a turbo motor, there's a lot more components here <laughs> to uh, remove uh, to get to the head gaskets. Uh, it's a complete teardown at that point. So, you know, you start thinking about, well, you know, should I go ahead and replace the heads? Maybe. Again, guys, I didn't build this motor. This was, if you go back, go back like three years ago, watch the video on where we bought in 89 um, because a son and dad had built a brand new trick flow motor, uh, fresh rebuild in it. I wanted the motor. He wouldn't pull it from the car. He made me take the whole car for the price of the motor. I parted the car out because it was being stripped for a race car, parted everything out of it, got my money back, and basically it was a free trick flow motor. That's the motor we've been banging on the last few years. Um, and it's been taken in abuse too. So no, we definitely have a head gasket leak. It probably happened whenever we, fi actually who knows, this may have been happening a long time. This may explain my overheating issues that we've been kind of struggling with. Um, and it also explains where my coolant's going. So I don't know why I don't see white smoke. Um, it must be just completely vaporizing through the turbo system. I don't really know. Um, it doesn't matter. We got to tear the whole motor down. So <laughs> it is what it is. So we're going to stop there. I'm not going to drive it. Let's drain the oil and then uh, 
I'll, I'll release you guys. Okay, class class has been released. Okay, go do go you do you stuff. Go build your car. Okay, you do that. All right, let's take a look here. Well, it's definitely nasty. I haven't changed. I changed it. Um, oh God, not that long ago. I changed it. Let's see, probably about four or five months ago. Yeah, it's dirty and it is um, a little on the milky side. I did notice when I first undid the plug, a little bit of water dripped out because water is going to go to the bottom. And uh, anyway, some of that water came out, dripped out, so coolant came out. So it's definitely getting some coolant. It's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. All right, as you can see, we are well underway. Next day, late at night, spent my night out here tearing it apart. I spent probably a good hour just getting the downpipe off. But this will be for another video. Um, we will have to break into this motor and you'll have to see what we find out and where the gasket leak is. If it is a gasket leak, it likely is. Check out this picture. Look how much coolant now has been leaking into it as it sat overnight. You can even see down the wall where the coolant's been dripping. So it is most likely a head gasket, but man, I'm glad we caught this when it did because we could have easily hydrolocked the motor if we let it sit longer. But just have to wait till the next video. So right now this is gonna take priority um, over Eagle Brews over here. Eagle Brews does have some updates. I can't show you yet. I'll wait though, I'll wait and show you next time. Um, I got some stuff to show you on it. And um, you know, our Turbo 86 here, it's key that I get this girl back on the road. It just is, I can't have two projects or broken down cars. Just my mind won't function <laughs> with these extra parts all over the garage, okay? Right now, every corner, nook, and cranny, and, and everything is just you know pile full of uh, spare parts and now takeoff parts. So that's okay. Um, literally, everything has to come out of this motor. Um, I gotta take the power steering pump off, take the turbo off, take the headers off, and then um, you know I've already undone the fuel system. So we're getting there. A lot of work was done on this thing tonight. Uh, the harness has been removed, so all that has to happen so we can get the heads off and the intake off, and we'll give a good cleaning too. The intake's dirty. It's kind of nasty, so. While we're at it, we'll do that. So my, now the plan is, assuming that it's a head gasket. Oh, and let me show you this too. Look at the sludge. So, sludge in this guy, less sludgy. Got a little bit of sludge in it, but not as much sludge as this one does. So that's, got, that's nasty looking. So yeah, it's gonna be interesting to take the valve covers off. Next video, we have to wait for the next video. We'll take the valve covers off. We'll take the intake off, we'll take the heads off. And the plan is to get the heads resurfaced and then slap on some felt pros and Send it. Head gasket is literally a fuse that blew um, instead of my piston or my motor or rods. So, hey, listen, guys, check out housedo.com. I got some new t shirts out there. Pretty cool. Uh, click on the merch. And uh, we got it's a Fox Body Thing t shirts from all different models. I got an LX GT Cobra four eyed and a Sinister four eyed. It's also a Texas it's a Fox body thing. So those shirts are gonna be available, or at least one of them is. I'm gonna print, mass print up one of them for Fox Fest coming up in May. More to come on that too, but I gotta end it here. I gotta keep working on this, and I gotta keep rolling for you guys. I gotta keep this camera going all the time. We're gonna call it a camera goal. So stay tuned, more to come, and uh, yeah, hey, we'll see you guys next time. Take care.